I was thinking about this, and you brought this up. Talk to me. So, I don't want to get into the semantics, but whatever. Two years ago, the Warriors played the Boston Celtics in the finals. They did. Get your boy Jay. <laughs> but your boy Jay's lurking. No one can see him, okay? He's behind the glass, <laughs> all, right. all right? We're talking on the uh, radio here. I, here's, here's my first question. Is, is the question yes. fair? Is this question that I'm going to ask even fair? You ready? Warriors played the Celtics a year and a half ago in the NBA Finals. Warriors beat them in six games. Is this question even fair to ask? Okay, who's closer to a title right now? The Boston Celtics. Okay. So, is that an indictment on the Warriors? No. Why not? And that's why I think it's a good question, even though I guess, you know, at a surface level it's unfair, is the Warriors made the choices they did because they won the championship. They also forced the Boston Celtics into a position to now where they kind of blew up a big piece of their core. Now, they still got Jason Tatum. They still got Jalen Brown, guys that have been there for five, six years. But Marcus Smart got there before any of them. He had been on the Celtics for nine seasons, and they shipped him to Memphis. And they tried to upgrade. I know some of it has to do with trying to get under the second apron, which is something the Warriors are going to have to worry about in the future. But I think the Warriors are the reason why Boston is a reshaped, reformed, and retooled roster. And the reason that the Warriors are still the way they are is because they won the championship. Yeah. I. So the, they play the finals two years ago, and the Warriors essentially decide to run it back. Remember, they signed Wiggins. They signed Poole. Then a year later, they would sign uh, Draymond Green. Like, they have... They won a title two years ago, and they've done everything to keep it the same to try to reproduce another title. One more. The Celtics, they get to the finals two years ago. They lose. They hang tough for another year. And now, now they've got an entirely different team. They've got off Grant Williams. They got off Robert Williams. They don't have Brogdon anymore. They have Porzingis. They have Drew Holiday. They've got a different team. And my question is, is it fair to, to look at the Warriors and say, well, the Celtics are still there and the Warriors aren't? And I get it. And here's the argument. And this is why I'm asking if it's a fair question. They have two stars in their mid-20s. We have two in their mid-30s. That's it. That's the difference. Okay, but I would argue this. You have, you, have, you, have a, you have a proven, two years ago you had a proven championship core, proven, that had done it. The Celtics have never proven their core is good enough to win a title. So who cares if one group's in their 30s and one group or twosome's in their 20s? The reality is you both were at the same level two years ago. And one team has fallen off more drastically than the other. Yeah, and Fair I, or not, Warrior fans, 888-957-9570. I think it is fair because Boston has had all the talent in the world. I mean... Well, Jason Tatum, when he was a rookie, went to the Eastern Conference Finals and took LeBron to Game 7. I forget if it was 2017 or 2018, but like they've had a core that you could envision winning, not one, but potentially multiple titles, and they've only been to one NBA Finals. I mean, last year they got knocked out by an 8 seed. Yeah. And they lost in seven games. So Boston has been kind of the poster boy for underachievement in the league, and I think that's why they went out and tried to acquire a championship player in Drew Holiday. Why they tried to, you know, move around. They sent Robert Williams the third to, to Portland. You know, they brought in Chris Stepps, Porzingis. Um, they moved off of Brogdon, who was a guy they brought in last year. Like, they're trying to do everything they can to win now or maximize this roster because you don't know how long these things go. And even though the Warriors made the most of their teams in their mid-20s, the Warriors have shown that this thing has gone on for a decade, and they are always going to be in contention or have always been in contention for titles. Boston, I mean, they're good. There's no doubt about it. 
I mean, the last, what, three years they've won the most regular season games from any team in the Eastern Conference, or they've been first or second. Like, they're a damn good team, but they haven't gotten it done. And so I think they're in a position to where, who is it now, Brad Stevens in their front office? Yeah. Is probably trying to figure out if, all right, if we can't do it this year, and we spend all the capital in the world to shift things around, you move off your leader in Marcus Smart, like, I, I don't know if Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are the guys that can win a championship. What's the difference between the Celtics moving off uh, Marcus Smart and the Warriors moving off Draymond Green? Aren't they both the respective heart and souls of their team? And Boston, I'm not saying the Warriors should move off Draymond because the Celtics moved off Marcus Smart, but he was there, Draymond Green, apparently, and they weren't afraid to to shuffle, you know, shuffle the deck a little. I you know, I just I listen, I get hindsight's 2020, but the Warriors won the title two years ago. And what did they do? They re-signed Andrew Wiggins. They didn't have to. They could have let him play one more year. They re-signed Jordan Poole. They didn't have to. They could have let him play one more year. But they signed him to keep everything intact. Another year goes by. We don't have a great year, but they re-signed Draymond Green in the hope of winning one more title. I just think it's pretty interesting the way the Warriors are kind of kind of been doing everything they can to keep this thing together in the hope of winning a title, and it feels like they're slipping a little bit. But the Celtics the last couple of years have done, you know, try to do everything they can and be in on every deal. And now they're sitting with a team that has got a shot at it. Maybe they don't. I don't know. They're 20-5. and five And, and uh, you know, it just makes me wonder, well, you know, what could have changed? If, if, if the Warriors don't win that title, we're probably not at the same place. No, and I think the Celtics are probably closer to the place that they were in 2022. But I think that's kind of the way sports go, right? I mean, you have to reward Andrew Wiggins as well as Jordan Poole in that offseason. Pool is a little bit different because that was his first big contract, and right. so you want to or you envision keeping a 22 year old at the time around for a while, and then Wiggins had just played the best basketball of his career, and I, I, I remember being on the radio that day when the when the Wiggins contract came down, and I was ecstatic because not only they you know they locked up two future pieces that were in their 20s, but Andrew Wiggins at the time took a pay cut. Yeah, like Bob right. Myers got him to take less money than he was making prior to that. So you thought that you were going to have a good contract in Wiggins, an ascending star in Pool, and unfortunately that didn't really end up being the case. But I, I can't fault any of those, either of those two decisions. Now, the Draymond Green signing this offseason, I think it was kind of a damned if you, damned if you do, damned if you don't spot. Right. But those two contracts... If someone disagrees with them or did disagree with them at the time, I'd be very surprised. I'm trying to think how I thought of the Wiggins one because it, it wasn't a terrible deal by any stretch, uh, the money uh, money wise coming off that finals. But it they could have just said, "Yeah, play out your last year, have another good year, and you'll maybe you'll make 35 million uh, a year." I don't know. I just I. I just think it's pretty uh it's pretty interesting because it does feel like uh you know it feels like the the Warriors are a little further away from it. I mean, I think we could all Let me ask you this. If you're a Warrior fan right now, all right, you got your four rings. I'm not taking those from you. I'm you, not taking those from you. Better you, not. You earned them, fans. Brother. <laughs> uh I mean, you'd rather be you'd rather be a Celtics fan right now than a Warrior fan if you had a vested interest in which team's going to go further for the next few years, right? 888-957-9570. But I can always pull the trump card, which is the Celtics don't have Steph Curry. I mean... Would you rather have Steph or Jalen Brown and 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 uh, Tatum? I'd rather have Steph and Curry. You're so sentimental. I am. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I grew up watching this guy, have fallen in love with the way he plays basketball. And can't make a I'm three an anymore, for, Evan. Oh, by you the can't way, can't make a three anymore. That reminds me. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no. Why should I even have to tell people I'm kidding? You know me by now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, last time he didn't make a three in a game, I was a year out of college. 
I, I, December first, two thousand eighteen. That was the last time he didn't make a three in a regular season game. So about six years. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Well, a uh, nice little run. <laughs> but the last time he didn't make a three in any basketball game was actually in the two thousand and twenty two NBA Finals, which is another reason why I was so pumped about the Wiggins contract because the Warriors won that game and they won it by ten. It was Game Five in or at Chase Center, actually. And Andrew Wiggins was unbelievable in that game. He had like 26 and 13. He looked like the second best player on a title team and affirmed, you know, just how far he'd come and his journey. And it was like, that could be the guy that we can envision having for another three or four years. Not that you're assuming he's going to stay at that level all the time, but if you can get that guy in a playoff series combined with what Steph continues to be combined, combined with uh, Clay Thompson also had a good game that night. And I think we made like what 20 something threes during the finals hadn't fallen off the way he had at the beginning of this season. Like it's, I think it's, it's easy to say now, okay, why did we make the decisions that we did? But at the time it, uh, it was pretty clear to me, like there was only really one way to move and that was forward. Because at the time, Kaminga hadn't shown you or wasn't allowed to show you what he could do yet. Moses Moody wasn't really a factor. I mean, they were more of a veteran team than they are now. They were. They absolutely were. Um, the 203 on the Comcast business tax line, uh, I don't understand the question. Uh, if you don't so- re-sign Poole, Wiggins, and Draymond, you get nothing in return. Right, but y- the Golden State Warriors... You get flexibility. Right. The Golden State Warriors have a... Well, Bob Myers always talked about not making a decision until you have to make a decision. And then my question is, did he make a decision too soon on... Look, he could have had Poole play out his last year and they could have re-signed him. They could have had Wiggins play out that year and either re-signed him or not. They could have had Draymond play out uh, the year and then decide. But they re-upped with all three of those guys. Um, they did make the choice earlier than they had to, though. And that could be one thing right. that... I'm not saying that the contract is on Clay Thompson's mind right now. But at the beginning of the year, this offseason, he's saying, well, you paid JP before you had to. You paid Andrew Wiggins before you had to. You even paid Draymond Green before exactly. you had to. He had a, what, a player option? Right. And so here's my question, just rhetorically... Why aren't you paying Clay Thompson before you have to? I mean, I think we know the answer there. Yeah. But that's a but that may be a factor into how this season's playing out. You you, you redid Poole early, you redid Wiggins early, you redid Draymond early, you did redid Steph as fast as you could, obviously. I'm sorry, I get he's not playing well, but I could absolutely see how Clay feels a little bit like the odd man out here. Uh, 510, I'm going to give you a, a Comcast business text line. I'm going to give you a chance to resign. Steiny's Stein acting like our season is over. He was talking the same way in, in 2021, or I think you probably mean 2022. Dude, they were 21 and 5 after six after 26 games two years ago. Now they're 12 and 14. Like, that's a big difference. That's a That's a big dose of reality. I think. Well, that's why I also think this next 10 and 11 stretch at home is big because right. if you don't, well, I, I look, they're missing Draymond, but I don't think Draymond is as important on the court to this team as he was to, say, the championship team a year and a half ago. So if you can't play well at home, and there's some beatable teams that are coming up in this stretch, if you can't show us that you can go six and four, you know, six and five, then, then yeah. Like, I, I I would lean at that point more towards your camp than the one I'm in now, Steiny. And you don't need me to cape for you, but I think also you were coming around to the possibility of them winning the championship. Because, But it was more at the beginning of the year you thought it might be done or this, that, and the other. But once you saw them go 18-2, it was like, well, yeah, absolutely they can win a title because they played two months of incredible basketball. And let me remind people that there were a lot of people that didn't think the Warriors were going to get it done two years ago. And to me, tops on the list was Joe Lacob and Bob Myers. 
I don't believe they thought this team was going to win another title. And that is a big reason why they went with two projects. Because you can't, you cannot tell me that if they really thought that they could stay in the mix from, you know, 21 to 25 as they have, they would not have drafted two projects. Period. So they draft two projects who aren't, I'm talking about Kaminga and, and, and Wiseman, they drafted two projects who they figured they had a, they had some time to develop because the window was closed, but could they keep it or could they repry it open two or three years down the road with these young players? And then what happened? They realized they couldn't get it done. So in other words, to me, the, the mistake the Warriors made was they didn't think they were going to win another title. Then they won another title. Then they said, we've got to now keep it together to try to win a fifth title. But now they're starting to realize we may now have to start over. You know what I mean? So I think, yes, I the two things can be equally true. The Warriors won a title two years ago, but it I think it set them back a little bit for the future. Would you make that trade? Every day of the week. I'm not saying that was wrong. I'm just saying here we are now two years later. I also think that moving past that too, like the Warriors have operated more reactionary than maybe people realize. Like they haven't just been this organization with, you know, the most foresight ever in NBA history. Like, okay, so they make those two picks, Wiseman and Kaminga, the the project you're talking about, because they see a runway to where they can develop and also compete. But then when that doesn't happen, then you, this past year, move off of projects like Patrick Baldwin Jr. or Ryan Rollins, whoever you want to throw in there, sure. and you take more proven players. You also trade one of your quote-unquote projects or up-and-comers, Jordan Poole, for a known commodity in Chris Paul. Like, the Warriors are, they've swung back and forth on the older or the younger, or like the two-timeline theory that, to their credit, they've never explicitly stated was the that was the goal, but the two timeline thing, they've swung back and forth on it multiple times. And I think that's also completely understandable because when you win the championship, then you have to lean back into the guys that got you there. Right. And when they don't get it done, well, then you need to bring in someone else to give you a chance at the future. Like, I, I, I don't know. I just think the Warriors have been pretty logical and more day to day than like, Oh well, you know, in, in five years we got to be this, or in three years we got to be that. No, they they're operating like any I think successful franchise is, which is you take it one day at a time. From the five one on the Comcast business text line, why would we want to be the Celtics when they haven't won anything? Yes, yeah. Well, they won eighteen titles. So you're five, and they're better now than you are. Well, they got eleven in thirteen years. I mean, well, what have I, they really done since Russell? Well, I agree. I mean, I'm just kind of uh, as Gary Radnich would say, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing a little bit.